All right, shalom, shalom. First off, give our praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakarkadash, the honors to the apostles and the elders of GMS. Salute and honor to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and sincerity, all the men, the women, and the children who follow. So I uh, got another lesson coming back at you, you know, through the spirit and the power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. A lot of um, news coming out, a lot of, you know, prophecy coming to pass, a lot of things that uh, we've been speaking about for some years is uh, drawing nigh, is getting closer and closer, okay? So, uh, Lord's what is edifying, and, um, you know, we're going to just go into basically, hey, the things that we were speaking about this past weekend on the highways, you know, call all y'all by Shem Yashai. You know they're they're happening really right, right in front of our eyes. We literally were speaking about um, Israel, uh, you know, going to war with Hamas and uh, Iran getting involved. So, you know, that's what we're gonna go into. Um, let me get this real quick. This is Matthew twenty four, and uh, I'll start at verse six. It says, "And you should hear of wars and rumors of wars." See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we know that this isn't the end-all, be-all, but we also realize and understand that, hey, man, this, this whole Israel, Palestinian, Hamas war, whatever you want to call it, this conflict, okay, is major prophecy, you know, coming to light before our eyes, all right? So uh, I got a video that I want to play. Um, and you know, we're going to just get the precepts and everything that go along with it, you know, in the, in the, uh, in the mid -year. So, uh, Lord's word is edifying. If you spend more than an hour a day on a side hustle and you aren't making thousands from it yet, this is the most important message you'll see all day. Come on. Well, we just learned that the United States House of Foreign Affairs Committee... It only do this when I start recording. Satan don't want this word to come out. Uh, it's also not dead. They just drafted legislation that authorizes President Biden to go to war against Iran. So here we go, guys. This is a neocons wet dream, of course. They've been wanting this for years. This is exactly what Republicans in Washington have wanted for many, many years. And by proxy, every Democrat wants it too. I mean, there are no anti-war people left in Congress at all. There's no daylight. Hey, and like I said, man, through the spirit party, how about Shimmy Ashai? This is what we were speaking about this past weekend. Okay. Basically, uh, and I'll read the, the video it says, we will wipe Iran off the face of the earth. U.S. Congress wants war. Okay. We were speaking about the tension between the U.S. and Iran, how it's been like that for years with them, uh, you know, enriching uranium and all the sanctions being pushed on them. You know, they've wanted to do this for years. So <clears throat> this whole situation that's going on in the Middle East, all right, let's just bring up the map. This whole situation that's going on, it's just a, a easier way to to get it, things dropped off pretty much. Okay, let, let, let me see if I can bring up another map. Uh, let me see. So, what's a good map? Let me see. There we go. So if we bring up a map of the Mediterranean Sea, here we go, right here. Damn, I was probably shouldn't have did that. All right, so we're gonna use these maps in conjunction. So what um what the U.S. has done, it has set some uh some carriers, okay? And they came through the Straits of Gibraltar right here 
and entered into the Mediterranean Sea so that they can post up right here, right off the coast of Israel, okay? Which is right about right here. Just showing you how they got here. They came through Africa, okay? Between Africa and Europe, down the Mediterranean Sea, and over here, <clears throat> right where Israel and north of Egypt, all of that, okay? So, America's right here, and we all know all the, the hotbed of Israel is right here. Within Israel, and these two very, uh, see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, here we go. These two yellow areas, that's Palestine. That's where the Palestinians have as a uh, territory. All right, and from this little spot right here, that's Gaza. All right, that's where all the action is going on right now. That's why, uh, you know, Israel was telling them to, to flee into to Egypt and all the other places, right? So all this controversy over, you know, this little bit of land. And Israel's the size of New Jersey, just to give you context. This is about the size of New Jersey. Very small. Very minuscule. That's why, you know, when you read the scripture where it says, and we'll get it here shortly, uh, the least of the flock shall draw them out. It's because they are literally that they're the least of the flock. They're a small number. Okay. But um, this is where all the controversy is going on. Now, and uh, let me see. I'm just going to go over like a brief overview, and then we're going to go into a deep dive uh, here in a second. But uh, basically, Hamas is right here. They're attacking Israel. Israel's attacking them back. The U.S. is bringing their ships over here. And Hamas is backed by Iran. Okay? So Iran, they're, what they're saying is Iran is sending weapons over to Hamas, and they're using the weapons to get Israel. Israel has been saying for years, you know, that they'll do whatever they need to do to stop Iran from getting nuclear missiles. Okay? Even uh, preemptive strikes. So Israel is saying that they will strike Iran first to prevent them from weaponizing uranium and uh, making a nuclear weapon. So you also have here in, uh, in Jordan and uh, Lebanon, you also have other groups that are anti-Israel. One of them being, uh, what's their name? Hezbollah. So you have Hezbollah, who is also against them. Remember, not too long ago, a couple years ago, there was a big war in Syria. Now, all these wars that are being fought, it's, it's really just a proxy of the same war. Or it's World War III because you have two factions, two different sides. You have Israel, America, and NATO on one side, and you have pretty much Russia, Iran, China. You know, their subsidiaries, their little cronies, their, the little brothers, you know, um, fighting, fighting right along with them. So, hey, this ain't, there's nothing new under the sun, man. This is what's been going on. What's going on in the Cold War? You know, when you let me see. Give me a second here. All right, I'm back with it. So when you look at all these different proxy wars, these are all wars uh fought during the Cold War, but they were all backed by the United States on one side and Russia on the other side. Okay, the first two need civil war and 55 to 72, the Suez crisis, the Congo crisis, North Yemen civil war, Darfur rebellion, the Sand War, Rhodesian Bush War. And you can look up all of these wars and you're going to see and 90 percent of these, these are all in Africa. Most of them are in Africa. Some of them are, uh, you know, uh, in the Middle East, but. For the most part, these are all Africa, all right? And then when you go over here, like the Yom Kippur War, okay, which was, you know, a brief conflict, but it was it took place in, in, in Israel, all right? But all of these, man, 
Um, let me see. On May 15th, 1948, the first day of Israeli independence, and exactly one year after the UNSCOP was established. All right, we'll get that here in a second just for edification. Give me a second. The United Nations Special Community uh, Co Committee on Palestine says the the USCO recommended the establishment of two separate states, Jewish and Arab, to be joined by economic union with Jerusalem Bethlehem region as an enclave under international administration. On November nineteenth, November twenty ninth. Uh, 1947, the UN General General Assembly voted on the partition of plan on the it's like on the partition plan adopted by 33 votes to 13 votes with 10 abstentions. So basically, a two party state. So when you go back to over here, that's why you see in this one land you see two different regions. So Palestine got one and Israel got one. And remember, the scriptures say that when Israel comes back, okay. That there would be no more war in the land. Well, let's just come back over here. And now that we know what that uh uh Unescope is, it says on May 15th, 1948, the first day of Israeli independence, and exactly one year after Unescope, all right, that agreement of two party states was established, Arab armies invaded Israel, and the first Arab and Israeli war began. So the <laughs> the very first day that these uh, ish people, the 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 rallies, you know, came back into the land, it was war. But when you go into all of these different wars right here, going back to the main point, on one side you always had the U.S. back in uh, one side of the war, and on the other side you had Russia back in the other side of the war, and that's the same. That uh, happened in Syria. You had, uh, you know, people standing up for the, the rebels, you know, that invaded Syria. They were backed by NATO and the U.S., you know, trying to get, uh, I can't remember the, 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 the leader of Syria. Uh, I could picture his face. Ah, uh, it's going to bother me. I'll probably have it in five or ten minutes. But, um trying to get him out of there, but he was backed by who? He was backed by Iran, and he was backed by Mother Russia. Okay, so that conflict, you know, went on, it dragged out, and it's the same deal. You know, his, uh, uh, Hamas is backed by Iran, so that's why all this, this um, heat is getting started, okay? Uh, so... Let's, let's let this video play a little bit more. I know I'm being long-winded. Lord's will, y'all edify with this. Just If y'all bear with me, you know what I'm saying, we're going to get it in tonight. Between these two corrupt political parties, make no mistake about it, Republicans, Democrats, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Maybe the only one who was like actively challenging money to Ukraine was Matt Gaetz. Uh, heck, Jim Jordan was somebody, you know, challenging money. Which Ukraine is another one, which is, you know, Russia, of course, is, you know, head on in this war. But Ukraine's backed by the United States. It's, it's, it's all the fact of World War Three. All right. They haven't come out and said it's World War Three, but it's all these little skirmishes, all these little people. Everyone's chosen a side already. All right. It just isn't full blown uh, 1v1 uh, USA and Russia. But as we get into it, you know, we're going to we're going to see. So let's let it play money to Ukraine. But I mean, they all fall in line eventually, it seems. Maybe Rand Paul, 
But for the most part, but anyway, this is a neocon sweat dream. Not even Bernie Sanders. Not and even that Bernie is Sanders. Like yeah, the thing we thought we would get from Bernie Sanders because he spoke out about the military oh, industrial. Oh, the squad. Conflict. Yeah, the right. squad. What I, happened to them? I thought for sure he would be the one saying, "At least let's no. do some bean counting." No, he that, wants no care. bean counting. Thirty-three trillion dollars in debt. So yeah, let's go to war. That's a good idea. House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Mike McCall just told CNN that his committee is drafting legislation in the event that it's necessary to authorize U.S. military force if the current conflict between between Israel and the 17 factions uh, of Palestinians, uh, you can call it Hamas if you want to. That's how the mainstream media frames it, of course. But uh, yeah, that, that, that's a, if it spills over any further, then the U.S. would use military force if the current conflict between Israel and Palestinians basically broadens into a wider war with Iran. That's the message of this legislation from the U.S. Foreign Affairs Committee. And this. All right. So from what he just said. This guy, and they're going to show his video here in a second, but um, he basically said that they're authorizing that if the conflict between the Palestinians and Israel goes any further which means if Iran decides to join the party, that the U.S. is going to join the party and <clears throat> we're going to get further into, you know, the wiping off the face of the earth. But uh, let's let's get Jeremiah 49 right now because that's the catalyst of it, all right? Jeremiah 49 and 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he has taken against Edom, the so-called white man, and his purposes that he had purposed against the, inhab- <clears throat> excuse me, the habits of teeming, which is just a tribe of you know, Edomites. It says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Going back to the, the rallies, they are the least of the flock. They're drawing who out? They're drawing these nations out to come to war. Okay, it says, surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. All right, so <clears throat> we know that there's going to be a great destruction and that these rally people, these are the guys who are basically going to pop everything off. Now, he mentioned uh, the U.S. are drawing up paperwork right now to allow uh, us to go into Iran. Let's look at this. So this is from uh, the EC fr.eu all right the european council on foreign relations all right dated september 6 just last month 2023 says alone together how the war in ukraine shapes the russian iranian relationship let's see how how this war in ukraine like i said another proxy war for world war three let's see how it shaped the relationship the war in Ukraine has led to unprecedented levels of Russian-Iranian cooperation, all right, in the military, ec- economic, and political sphere, uh, spheres, okay? So politically, economically, and mil- militarily, this war in Ukraine is just bringing Russia and Iran closer and closer and closer. So if America decides that they want to, you know, Get in, get in conflict with Iran. Who do you think follows that? But wait a minute. Let's back it up a second, okay? Because going back to what what it said, we, we being the U.S. Congress, all right. It says that they want war, but you don't just go to war with the U.S. Okay, so let's get that. All right, it says, um, what happens if someone declares war on a NATO country? It says the alliance is founded on the principle of collective defense, meaning that if one NATO ally is attacked, then all NATO allies are attacked. For example, which Israel is not a NATO ally, which is why their big brother America is getting involved but not all the NATO countries are getting involved. But 
if any Americans just so happen to be attacked, then that means all of NATO is attacked. For example, when the terrorists attacked the United States on 9-11-2001, all NATO allies stood with America as though they had been attacked. So if you mess with one, you mess with them all. Or who is all? All right? So if you start any kind of war, any kind of conflict with Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, uh, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, the UK, the US, Greece, Turkey, Germany, Spain, Czechia, uh, Hungary, Poland, Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slavica, Slovenia, Albania, Croatia, Montenegro, North Macedonia, or Finland. And now, Ukraine. Any of these countries. Also, yeah, yeah, Finland, which Finland is right there on the, on, uh, the border as well with Russia. All right, I'm going to get into that as well, but... Um, if you start war with any of these countries, then you start war with all these countries. And if you look at the map, you see Russia right here. You see how NATO is encasing them around. All right, they're on their doorstep, which is why they didn't want them to to do anything with Ukraine. And since they decided to do to to try to recruit Ukraine, Russia did what they had to do, which is why we are in this situation right now. Okay, with the Russian. Ukraine conflict. Okay, so, and you know, bear with me because I know I'm I might be all over the place. Uh, Lord as well, y'all willing to or y'all are able to follow me. Okay, um, so I keep wanting to bring up points, but I have to stay on on subject, and then I be forgetting stuff. But uh, damn, there was something I wanted to say about Russia. Damn, it, it, it left me. I do believe that Syrian president was al-Assad, though. Let me, that's going to bother me. I believe it was al-Assad. Bashir al-Assad, president of Syria. Here we go. Call it, yeah, Bashir al But, um, all right, this, so let's just get back. Okay, yeah. So, Russia and and uh, Iran, they're you know buddy buddy, they're closer than ever. It says the rise of anti-Western hardliners in both Moscow and Tehran mean that this cooperation is likely to continue and intensify despite the differences between them. Hold on, y'all. All right, we back with it. So it's likely to continue and intensify despite the differences between them. All right, so they're they're clicked up now. Also, you have um, China and the rest of the BRICS organizations clicked up with them as well. All right, Brazil, Russia, uh, uh, India, China, South Africa. All, all, you know, together in one conglomerate. Now, that's more of a economic agreement, but military and economics, political, they're all three, it's not two sides of the same coin, but, you know, they're all the same triangle. It's a, it's a, it's a triangle. They all go together. If you if your militaries are, you know, having joint operations, you know, you're exchanging money or whatnot, more than likely I share some of the same political views as well. So these three, I did a, a lesson years ago called uh, the Triangle, speaking about these three, Russia, Iran, and China. Okay? So their relations are getting tight, tight as ever, which is scriptural. All right? So uh, this is Ezekiel 38 and 
Uh, I'm just going to get to the point because we're going to start at verse 4. It says, uh, I'll start at 3. It says, And say, thus says the Lord power, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth. Right? So the Most High is going to turn. It says it's God. Or so it's talking about God, right? God in the land of Magog, which is Russia. All right? He said that he's going to turn them back. What does that mean to turn them back? Turn them back to what? He's going to turn them back to the old Soviet Union that they were, right? When Russia was running things back in that Cold War area uh, era, when they were building up missiles and had, you know, millions of people in the army, and you know, they were uh, uh, everybody hated the communists. Yeah, that big opposing force. That's what he's going to turn them back into. Right, he says he says and put hooks into their jaws, and he's gonna bring them forth. All the all thine armies and horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields. So they're getting ready for war. And that's what Russia Russia's already in a physical war with Ukraine right now. You don't think they see what's coming down the pipe? They know that it's a bigger war brewing with America. It's been brewing. Going back to to all the the, the different uh all the different you know skirmishes, all the different uh proxy wars fought, you know, from fifty five all the way through eighty seven. Thirty years. Thirty two years of war. Without shit, 91, 99, 40 years, 40 years of war without actually being in war with each other. These people know what they're doing. This ain't no new, new stuff, but here's the point though. It says, uh, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. All right. It says, uh, Persia. Ethiopia, Libya with them. Persia is Iran. Okay? All of them with them with shield and helmet, so they're going to stand together. Right? Gomer and all his bands, the house of uh, Tagarma and the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. And you're going to see a lot of that with all of these nations right up in here okay as you go further north you get into russia but you'll see um man what is that thing called i had it up earlier oh man there it is the collective security treaty organization which is a smaller version of nato but it has uh armenia belarus kazakhstan Kyrgyzstan, Russia, and Tazakistan, which, uh, let me see if we can get an image to this, to these countries. All right, beautiful, beautiful. So let's, uh, set that aside, and then... Let me see, Gog, Magog. Let's see. Now all these, here we go. Now all of these are always uh, accurate, but you know we we work with what we got. Um, so let me see. So we have here the Collective Security Treaty Organization, and you have Russia and Belarus and Armenia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, all the stands, right? Stand by me. So you have all these countries together in one 
collective organization, right? Now, Tubal, Meshach, Persia, all of these same countries, right? So let's go back to the Togomar, Gomer, Persia, okay, Gog, all of these countries, you know, all of these countries right here, still is they're sticking together, man. It's Bible prophecy. And what did it say for Russia to do for them? For what did it say for God for God to do for them, right? It says, Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Let's get this word guard. All right, um, a place of conf confinement, prison, a guard, guarding person, active guarding. All right, Slocky, this is a strong H4929. Mashamar. This is a, yeah, basically a guard, guard post, active guarding. Diligence of guard. Office, award, watch. Basically, you're watching over them. You're guarding them, okay? It's not saying it in like the, not like a prisoner or anything like that, but you're, you're guarding them. You're, you're, you're looking out for their safety, okay? So, I know that's a lot, y'all. <laughs> we ain't really that far into the video, but, uh, Hey, there's still, still some more that's going to come out. Lord's will, y'all still rocking with me. Um, Remember college. Five-hour energy got you through then. And now? Well, we just learned that the United States House of Foreign... Bear with me, y'all. Like I said, it must be because of the screen recording because this don't happen. That's the only thing I could think of. From the U.S. Foreign Affairs Committee. And this Come on. I do got a lot of tabs, but it shouldn't be. Let me try to get rid of some of this bandwidth. Hold on, y'all. Let me stop it and come back on part two.